My guests today are Rachel Spiegel, who is the Chief Executive Officer and Owner at the Verdes Foundation, a medical marijuana company. Lee Munson is a financial market analyst who has studied the cannabis industry. And Richard Ankle, the Executive Director of the New Mexico Tax Research Institute. Welcome, all of you. Lee, one of the things that lawmakers have been saying for a long time is, well, hey, now, let's not get hasty. We want to see what other states are doing. Well, now it's been a while, right? right. So uh, you've been watching it. Right. What do we know about how this has happened in other states? Looking at the money, really, the taxes. Well, let's look at the taxes, because California got about 40% less in revenues than what they thought, right? And that's because they failed in so many ways but they mostly fail to knock out the black market trafficking, the unlicensed dispensaries. Uh, you get into other places like Denver, you know, many people will say up there, Denver is the model, why don't other states just copy us, just put it in the copy machine and pass that legislation? <laughs> They're very cocky up there, right? <laughs> But you've seen in the stores how they've been able to bifurcate and make these like sort of like walls in between the medical and the retail side. Mm -hmm. They have the type of enforcement that's together up in Colorado where they can monitor, enforcement can monitor from seed to flower. Now, nobody's gonna like everything, right? But we have seen, I think, what to, to what Rachel is saying, you know, the problem in Washington state when all of a sudden they want to go from medical to recreational, and then the medical, uh, you know, it just falls apart. So I think that you have to remember, part of it is not making prohibition through taxation, number one. The second thing that we have to think about is, are we going to encourage local businesses? Back to your argument about uh, taxing too high so that you um, don't eliminate the black market. Does 12% sound reasonable to you? Well, we're gonna find out pretty soon, aren't we? I think it does <laughs> sound reasonable. But you were talking about um, encouraging local companies to do this business and not bigger out-of-state companies. What's the concern here? If we allow interstate marijuana sales, what's gonna happen, in my opinion, is that it will flood the market with cheap stuff. It's gonna put a lot of pressure on Rachel and other people who've been here serving the community for many years. And we're gonna lose the opportunity because the people who own those things are not circulating that money inside of the state of New Mexico. We're gonna be left with low paying jobs of just people working minimum wage, you know, selling a product versus creating, marketing, innovating. And then we'll also lo lose the opportunity that state chartered banks have which is to figure out the holy grail, which is merchant banking, and figure out how to do lending and banking locally so that a local banker can catch a spread. Last question, and I want your prognostications here. Is it gonna pass? Oh, wow. I would have said no until this past weekend. I think the fact that they've tied some of the medical initiatives into this bill, I'm a 50-50 split, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put the line in the, I'm gonna say yes. Oh my goodness. I know. Richard, what do you think? I'll hedge, I'll say the chances are better than they've ever been. <laughs> but there's a lot of political dynamics in Santa Fe and the clock can run out, you never know for sure. Me? A hundred percent of the problems in California is not, is, is having to go back to the voters on every little thing. So this better pass and we better get started and there's gonna be a bunch of mistakes and a bunch of things we'll sit six months from now and say, why didn't we see this? And that's okay because they can fix it about 50 miles from here. Thank you three so much for this great conversation about this possibility.